Thrombosis is the formation or presence of a blood clot within the circulatory system. Blood clotting can be useful, as it prevents excessive blood loss when a blood vessel is injured, but clots can also form when they aren't needed and cause serious medical problems. Let's look at three such problems. In deep vein thrombosis, a clot forms in the calf or thigh as a result of stasis or slow blood flow. For example, in people who experience long periods of inactivity, or in response to inflammatory mediators from surgery, trauma or infections. The clot can cause pain and swelling. If part of the clot breaks off into the bloodstream, it can end up lodging in the lungs. This is called a pulmonary embolism and can be life-threatening. In individuals with atherosclerosis, a blood clot can form within an artery supplying blood to the heart muscle in association with an atherosclerotic plaque. The obstruction to blood flow can result in a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. In patients with atrial fibrillation, the most common form of cardiac arrhythmia, a clot can form as a result of the ineffectual contraction of the left atrium. If the blood clot leaves the heart and travels through the circulatory system to the brain, a stroke can occur. During blood clotting, the blood cells are held together within a mesh of fibrin. Fibrin is the end product of the blood coagulation cascade and medicines that target individual components of this cascade have been developed to inhibit blood clotting in high-risk patients. Warfarin is one such medicine. It's an oral anticoagulant drug that's been used for around 60 years. Warfarin prevents clotting by lowering the levels of active vitamin K, a molecule essential for the maturation of a number of the blood coagulation factors. It's commonly prescribed to patients with deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism and to patients with atrial fibrillation. But unfortunately, many commonly used medicines and foods modify the effect of warfarin. Additionally, how patients metabolize warfarin varies considerably and so its activity has to be monitored by regular blood testing. Because of these issues, many patients who should be taking warfarin do not do so and investigators have been searching for other, more straightforward therapeutic options. Several non-vitamin K oral anticoagulants, or NOACs, have been developed over the past 15 years or so. Dabigatran is a direct thrombin inhibitor that has been approved for patients with deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, and some patients with atrial fibrillation. 3-factor 10A inhibitors have also been approved for use in these settings. In Europe, one of these drugs, River Oxaban, can also be used in patients who've had a heart attack. In contrast to warfarin, the effects of the NOACs are unlikely to be modified by food and other medicines, and they can be given in a fixed dose without the need for monitoring. Importantly though, sometimes the effects of anticoagulant medications need to be reversed very quickly. For example, when a patient is experiencing uncontrolled bleeding or during an emergency surgery. To reverse the effects of warfarin, patients can be given vitamin K. But until very recently, specific reversal agents for the NOACs have been unavailable. Ideucisumab is a specific reversal agent for dibigotran that has now been approved by the FDA for clinical use. It's a humanized antibody fragment that binds dabigotran and prevents it from interacting with thrombin. A reversal agent for the factor 10A inhibitors is also currently being reviewed by the FDA. This agent, and dexinet alpha, is a protein derived from human factor 10A. And dexinet alpha acts as a decoy by directly binding the factor 10A inhibitors and preventing them from interacting with endogenous factor 10A. Other reversal agents for the NOACs are in earlier stages of development. Specific antidotes for NOACs could help to manage their risks more effectively, enhancing their usefulness in the treatment of thrombotic disorders. Music